Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I didn't attend many of the previous lectures, unfortunately, so I don't know what was discussed. Hopefully what I will say will not be in orthogonal description with, this, with what was done before. Um, but I wanted first to mention that this partnership between engineering and uh, policy, it's fundamental to be able to address problems as complex as this. And so the Center for Sustainability Solutions that we established some time ago, I can see uh, moving forward in a great way. I wanted to thank and congratulate Dedlov and Mata for pushing this forward. And uh, I think uh, there's a tremendous bright future ahead for this uh, operation as well. Um, the whole uh, area of sustainability, which all of a sudden has become a much more urgent uh, a theme than ever before. It's interesting to um, uh, compare with respect to how engineers view the world 20 years ago. So I will read for you um, something from on September 1, 2000. That was 23 years ago. The late Bill Wolf, he was the president of the National Academy of Engineering. Bill passed away about uh, a month ago. He was a wonderful uh, person and gave the annual address at the National Academy of Engineering annual meeting. He singled out the 20 greatest engineering achievements of the previous century. And these were con collected from a distinguished committee that was actually chaired by Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, by the way, is a USC graduate. He graduated with a master's degree in aerospace engineering at USC. I used to say that when Neil went to the moon and came back, he realized that something was missing in his life and it was a master's degree from USC. <laughs> so he came in and got the degree. <laughs> the main criterion for the selection of these 20 uh, achievements was not gee whiz, but how much an achievement improved people's life. Let me tell you what were the 20, well, I want to go through the whole 20, but I'll tell you a few of them. Electrification. In 19, the, 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 before the, the 19th century, electrification was not there. It was a result of the 20th century. Automobile, airplanes, water supply and distribution that did not exist before. Electronics, computers, telephone, air conditioning and refrigeration, big deal. Highways. 44,000 miles of US highways that enable tra tra uh, personal travel, spacecraft, health technologies. Interestingly enough, at the time, petroleum and petrochemical technologies. We know how petroleum and fossil fuels are viewed today. Back in 2000, it was considered one of the major engineering accomplishments of the 20th century. Of course, laser and fiber optics, nuclear technologies, and high performance materials. It's very interesting to see how we view the world 23 years ago. He noted, uh, reviewing the list, it's clear that any, if any of its elements were removed, our world would be a very different place and a much less hospitable one. This was in 2000. Neil Armstrong noted that, Almost every part of our lives underwent profound changes during the past 100 years, thanks to the efforts of engineers, changes impossible to imagine a century ago. And he goes through many of these things. So then Bill was asked, or asked the rhetorical question, what would be the challenges for the 21st century? That was in 2000. Essentially, he mentioned that the challenges will be complexity and essentially the unintended consequences that will come with all our technological developments. He had the foresight to anticipate what will be in interesting things that are happening, will happen in the world. Fast forward to 2008. The National Academy of Engineering articulated grand challenges for engineering, 14 of them. You might ask the question, why 14? I am almost certain that the committee was asked to single out 10, and they could not come up with an agreement, so they end up with 14. They come up into four distinct buckets. One big bucket is health. 
other big bucket is security. A third bucket is enriching life. The fourth bucket was sustainability. Engineering, for the first time in 2008, decided that sustainability is a big deal. And part of the grand challenges for sustainability were carbon sequestration, that has to do with fossil fuels, obviously, energy from fusion, which still remains a, a dream in many ways, access to clean water, something that's an important part for many things, and the fourth was the nitrogen cycle has to do with agriculture. So these grand challenges, by the way, we started here at USC a Grand Challenges Scholars Program that won an award last year and so on and so forth. I won't say much more about that. But all of a sudden, sustainability, not all of a sudden, but sustainability has become a significant part of the, of the, uh, of the uh, attention of engineers in, in the National Academy. The reason for this recognition was the fact that everything is connected to everything. And Earth is a planet in which this is actually happening more and more, and it's much more apparent. I must say that Bill Wolf was here at this very room in 2005, articulating all these arguments. There was a national meeting of the Academy of Engineering right here. So the question is, um, what, how can we uh, use technology to address these big challenges? What we have seen in our lives and in recent years more, um, more particularly is the tremendous exponential growth of technology innovation, the exponential pace of technology innovation. If you uh, think about exponentials, you're mostly familiar with what's known as Moore's Law. Moore's Law, the doubling of this and that over so many months, is nothing else but an exponential. It, those of you who are math mathematically inclined, you will, you will agree with me. I think actually we are more than an exponential. We're close to a place where it's like a hockey stick behavior. It's almost like a singularity. You know, people have talked about singularity, and we see this with AI. What I'm trying to say is that technology is moving very fast. Technology focused in the right areas will be a, the, one of the most important solutions for us for the sustainability problem. I think that's why this, this, the, the, the marriage, the partnership between engineering and policy is so important in order to provide sustainability solutions. And I know this for a fact because the, the emphasis of the National Academy of Engineering today is very much focused towards sustainability. Um, last uh, two, two weeks ago, there was the annual meeting of the National Academy. Sustainability was uh, 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 front and center of that particular conversation. So I believe that by refocusing our activities and our efforts in this area, and by the recognition that it is becoming uh, more and more apparent across many of our, um, uh, uh, of our constituencies, and particularly among our students, I think we'll be able to address these significant problems as they, they, they come up uh, in the future. It's a, a matter of ethical decision making, and this is something I think that will become much, much more important in the future. I believe in this uh, very much in the, in the power of, 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 this, of innovation and technology innovation particularly, and I will, I will tell you why I, I say that. Um, I will use something that is not mine. I borrowed it from someone else, but I don't remember where I borrowed it from. So I'm just going to tell you that the more energy and more materials we consume, the less energy and the less materials we have. However, the more knowledge we consume, the more knowledge you get. So the innovation is actually something that will drive solution to all these problems. Um, very much believe in it in a very significant way. Um, and so I believe that there are tremendous opportunities for us to make significant advances. The difference is that the clock is ticking, technology is moving very fast, consumption follows that in a significant way. At the same time, knowledge moves equally fast. The competition between these two will decide which way we're going to go. And I think hopefully we'll be able to go on the right, in the right part of the equation. 
So scalable, reliable, equitable, and implementable uh, sustainability efforts will be very important as we move forward. UAC is ideally positioned for this because of the strength in multiple areas, from engineering to policy to sciences to business, uh, all aspects of, 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 uh, uh, of, the, of the university that touch upon different parts of sustainability. So mentioned we have an energy transition center here at UAC. Uh, we do a lot on sustainable computing. But the problems will become, I think, will require a lot more sophisticated way of thinking about it. Um, in many ways, um, uh, sustainability is um, uh, uh, related, if you like, to the generation of entropy. So I'm going to go a little bit of you know, physicist on you here. We want to make sure that this generation is minimized as much as possible, while at the same time we have a standard of living that actually is something that everybody uh, would like to continue. I'll close by um, quoting Neil Armstrong. And think about the following quote, but just move ahead a few uh, hundred years forward. Almost everybody, th think, think about it, think of a, Think of, a, of, of, a, of a, the equivalent in Armstrong, maybe 2015. Review and ask the question, what was the 20 biggest achievements of engineering, let's say, in the last 50 years? OK, I'm, I'm making here a, 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 a projection. Reviewing this list, it's clear that if any of its elements were removed, our world would be a very different place. Think about it 50 years ago, but with good progress of technology and a much less hospital one, hospitable. Almost every part of our lives underwent profound changes during the past 50 years, thanks to the efforts of engineers, okay, and uh, uh, pol uh, 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 policy people, <laughs> changes impossible to imagine a few years ago. People living in the early 2000s, would be amazed at the advancement that were brought by us. And someone who has experienced firsthand that, that, uh, what uh, Neil Armstrong said, one of engineers' most incredible advancements, I have no doubt that the next 100 years will be even more amazing. So I'll close to that with a positive, um, hopeful view of the things that we, we can accomplish. Just a matter of putting our efforts there, uh, working in, uh, in tandem in the, in the same direction and utilizing all the talent and the advances of technology, actually, that can help us do significant, significant progress in this area. So thank you very much. Thank you.